So let's start with a quick overview of what POAP actually does. POAP stands for Power On Auto Provisioning and it allows us to automate the process of upgrading software images and installing configuration files on Cisco Nexus switches being deployed for the first time. In order to use POAP we need the following four components. A Nexus switch without an initial configuration, a DHCP server capable of providing the switch with an IP address, gateway and the location of a script that will guide the rest of the installation process, a script server containing the installation script, and a configuration of software server containing software images and the initial switch configurations. Please note that the script server and the configuration and software server can in fact be the same box. So here's how the POAP process works. When the Nexus switch boots, it will enter POAP mode so long as no startup configuration is found. In this first step, it will attempt to obtain IP information from a DHCP server along with the location of our Python script. Once the switch has successfully been assigned an IP address, subnet masking gateway, and knows where to download our Python script, it will attempt to download the script from our script server via TFTP. Our Python script contains various information, including what version of the software the switch should be running, along with where the switch can find an upgrade software image if necessary. It will also contain where the switch should find its initial configuration file. Both the software image and the configuration file are then downloaded from the configuration and software server. The switch will then download and install any required software image along with its initial configuration. And that's it, our switch is now provisioned. Our first step is to configure our DHCP server. The role of the DHCP server is to provide the Nexus switch temporary IP information along with the name and location of our Python script. In this demonstration we will be running DHCP on a Windows 2012 server. Our first step is to define a scope that will provide temporary IP information to our Cisco Nexus switches so that they can complete the POAP process. Once our scope has been created, we have to add a couple of DHCP options to our scope. First we will add option 67, which allows us to specify the script name. Secondly, we will add option 150, so that we can let the switch know the location of our Python script. This option is not defined in Windows 2012 by default, and therefore before we configure it, we must create this option. Now that our DHCP server has been configured, the next step is to configure our script and the TFTP server from where it will be downloaded. In our example, our script server will also act as our image and configuration repository server. 
In our sample script, we can navigate to the options section where we can specify the protocol to be used to download the software images and configuration files along with the location of these files. We can also specify any required credentials. Lastly, we can specify the NXOS image that the switch should be running. If the software image specified differs from what is currently installed on the switch, the switch will perform a software upgrade. Finally, we will create our configuration files along with create any MD5 hashes required to verify the integrity of our Python script, software images and configuration files. Here you can see a list of our configuration files, all of which must be named CONF period and then the serial number of the switch to be configured. You can also see we have our POAP Python script and NXOS image files in the same directory. The first step is to create an MD5 hash of our POAP script so that the downloading script can verify the integrity of the script it downloads. We will repeat this step for each NXOS software image and for each of our configuration files. To create a configuration file, we simply create the file using the text editor. As you can see, all the commands used within the configuration file mirror those that we would use if configuring the switch using the CLI. The next step is to create an MD5 hash of our switch configuration file. So that's it, we can now watch our switch auto provision. And that's it, our switch is now provisioned.